Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of the Far Away Nearby podcast. This is Sue, Duchess of Albert. I am here with DJ Star Stage. Hello. And our special guest, Jim, whom you might recognize from Poke It With a Stick. Hi, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. It's good to meet you as well. It's good to have you here. Today we will be concentrating on the holidays. What are your family traditions for, say, for Thanksgiving and Christmas? Do you or your spouse serve turkey or ham? Uh, we are turkey people for Thanksgiving, Christmas. Um, we it might be ham, it could be turkey. It's usually never set in stone. Christmas, you know, where Thanksgiving is more rigid into the uh, old tradition of Thanksgiving, uh, a turkey stuffing, potatoes, pearled onions. Good thing mm. like that, and Christmas is never set in stone. It might usually might be a uh, large Italian dinner with uh, some sort of red sauce. Or, well, that sounds good. <laughs> or if it's Gavin and I, Gavin and I like to have a big, a big meal on Christmas Eve. We might have something stir fried, usually, or Chinese, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And I think it was last year was the first year we Gavin and I decided to have a ham on Christmas. Mm. Okay, but as far as you know, the uh, the food is always one part. As far as Thanksgiving, that it, we were always we always had Thanksgiving at home, and Christmas we had a, a growing up. We always had a big dinner on Christmas Day rather than Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve was always um, a lot of hubbub, you know, running around doing this, doing that, mm-hmm. you know, around the house and stuff, and getting ready pretty much for the next yeah. day. Mm-hmm. So we always had a bigger uh, dinner. Christmas Day than we did Christmas Eve. I know a lot of people, especially the Italians, they'll have a big meal on Christmas Eve. You know, and we we were never big Christmas Eve eaters. You know, it was more on the run. You know what I mean? Where Christmas Day was more like almost like having another Thanksgiving. But it always wasn't a big turkey. Okay. And DJ, what about you? In Billy and my situation, since we live between both of our jobs and... Mm -hmm. Our families actually live in different towns. I grew up out in the country, and he grew up pretty much in the city. Everybody's grown up and has their own home. So the holidays are always about those families getting together. And it's so interesting to think about when you're a kid, you just thought about you know, your brother and your sister coming, and you have dinner together. But now when you're all grown up, it's about trying to figure out how do you get all those families together. Yeah. So for me, um, what Billy and I do is we have a tradition that since his family lives closer, we typically have the holiday itself on the actual day with his family. And then on the weekend, since my family is more spread out, we typically have my family's holiday together then. It is become interesting in recent years because Billy works in retail, so he doesn't yeah. necessarily have Thanksgiving off. Now, because he's been with his company for a while, sometimes he's able to negotiate the schedule, and this year he's been very fortunate that he'll actually get off for dinner time but um, but we're not sure what we're doing with his family just because his brother is older and of course there's that whole tradition of you know the eldest male taking over responsibilities and well let's just say his brother doesn't always take care of those responsibilities (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, well, then the younger brother could do that. I Both of our families serve turkey, and one year, my brother-in-law actually was daring enough to do a fried turkey, oh, and wow. he, he did actually put thought into it, and he watched the videos online. Of course, I, I'm sure that you're familiar with the Food Network and Alton Brown. Yeah. He has a wonderful series of videos about how to do it safely right of course, the key thing is that with the craze of frying a turkey so many people have not read up on it it's not just like defrosting a frozen turkey and putting it in the oven <laughs> you know, you, you, there's all these fire hazards possibly there oh, and yeah. you know so i was rather impressed the other year when my brother-in-law actually followed the directions 
and the turkey came out, and it was actually pretty good. I so, understand that fried turkeys are excellent. I have never mm-hmm. had one. Yeah, I, I've only had it the once, but I think that probably something to do with the cooking process, it really retains the moisture well. Yeah. You know, it, it was impressive, actually. I don't know if he's done it since, but yeah, that's our tradition. We each have our own family gathering. Well, for us, Christmas is very similar, just simply because the reality is our families live in two different directions. Mm. Usually, I try to go to my sister's on the eve, so I will, um, you know, the night before the family event, I will drive down and I will stay overnight, because that also gives her and I a little uh, private time together before the rest of the the clan, I guess is what you'd say, <laughs> shows up. It, my, I had two sisters growing up, and to this day, they both have disagreements on who babysat for me the most. Oh, God. And, <laughs> and it's not really a serious argument. It's just kind of a cute, I miss you, and I haven't spent time with you. I used to babysit for you. And, yes. uh, you know, the reality is, is one, Betty got married at 17. And mm-hmm. she left home. So, of course, Ronnie was around more because she didn't leave. Yeah. So the reality is is that I'm closer with my eldest sister because our brains are also wired similarly. Yeah. And so we can appreciate the same programs and things. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> usually if I go down, down to my sister's on like a Friday night after I'm done with work, she and I will watch a movie and maybe have a glass of wine before the rest of the Hootenanny shows up the next day. Yeah. That's what we do for our family traditions. We spend Thanksgiving with my husband's family. Mm -hmm. And it is specifically with his father's family. It is not with his mother's family. Of course, his mother's family is a little more spread out. Some of them live out of state. But his father has a lot of family around here. Of course, his father is no longer with us but the children have kept up the the tradition of they get together somewhere and recently they've been meeting in this one small town where there's a little community center thing that they can use that uh, at relatively cheap and it's got a kitchen in it it's it's in pretty good shape (laughs) you know there are tables and what have you and it's clean and and what have you, and you take stuff in there, and uh, you plug in those humongous crockpot things that they have for turkeys that I don't know everybody I know has one except me. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think my mother-in-law had one either. But for a long time, they just went to different people's homes for for Thanksgiving, and everybody, it's a kind of potluck. Everybody brings something, a hostess, the host or hostess, the, the family that's putting it on, usually shows up with the, the meat, the turkey, or, and or ham, and usually, frequently, they have both, and then everybody else brings something else. Mm-hmm. You know? now, does the Duke come from a large family? Yes, he does, as a matter of fact. It, the extended family is kind of big. He only mm-hmm. has, well, and he has four brothers, but they're are only two grandchildren besides ours. Okay. The, not all of the fam- not all of the boys had children. I see. Okay. So, uh, but the, there are lots of cousins. Since our daughter came to us when she was sixteen, and she has never felt completely comfortable with my in-laws. Mm-hmm. She doesn't tend to come to these things. She has occasionally, but. And now that she's married, she is remarried, and she has family there, they they usually take some Thanksgiving time to spend with them. Uh-huh. Christmas is a different situation. We spend Christmas Eve with uh, my daughter because it's her birthday. Oh. And then we go over to my mother-in-law's because she had always figured that Christmas Eve was better for the kids to spend with her, with them. And then they were free to go to their other, the other spouse's family on Christmas or to do their own thing on Christmas. So we kind of have to divide it up. We go over to mom bears and spend some time for her birthday. And then we go over to my 
mother-in-laws and have Christmas with the family. And Christmas Day, we just sort of chill at our house. Do you have favorite dishes and appetizer dessert? Did a family member make this? Growing up when I was long, young, when I was long, when I was younger, I, I don't know why I loved pearled onions, the creamy, creamy onions. Oh, yes. I don't, seen, I don't know why I like those things. And that was one thing. That, the only time of the year we ever had them was Thanksgiving. But, you know, as I've gotten older, I, I've, enjoy, I've enjoyed some of the things that Gavin and I, like our traditions. For a while there, we've always had uh, Chinese dumplings before our meal, like as an appetizer. Mm-hmm. I've always liked the appetizer foods more than the actual meal. You know, <laughs> I'll put out a couple times. I've I've put out so many appetizers and pickies and cheese and crackers and stuff. By the time dinner comes, nobody wants to eat. Okay, but as far as the favorite foods, it, it would probably be the junk, the junk stuff that comes first. The dips and the cheese, yeah. and the salami, the the any pasta. I always enjoyed first. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds that sounds delicious. And is this this goes on for is, this is passed on from your your growing? Uh, yes, the this, family that you grew up with on on to to now. Yes, that was something you know when, when people as soon as people came in the house, food went down. Mm-hmm. You know, and like and it would always be the cheese and crackers and the stuff like that. And that would you know you you'd sit and nibble on that stuff until the dinner was ready to be put out. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I think the people come over my when I would have a lot of people come over for Thanksgiving, they would, I, I, you know, they would. I don't know if they were like starving hawks, but you know, sometimes I had put food down, like the pick the picky food, this you know, so we could just sit around and talk and eat. And you know, I go into the kitchen and come back out to the dining room, and by the time I get there, the shit's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it would be Chinese dumplings and cheese and crackers and. You know, maybe some sort of a grilled vegetable, things like that. Yeah. I remember on Christmas, uh, you know, we, growing up, we ate very lightly on Christmas Eve. It would be Mm -hmm. like finger foods that I tried doing that here in the house with Gavin and I. And um, that's how we started with the uh, stir fries on Christmas Eve. Um, I would, we would put egg rolls down. Yeah. You know what I mean? While we were either trimming tree, you know, finishing up the tree or wrapping gifts or stuff like that. It would be finger food, something baked. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I, I used to love the egg rolls on Christmas Eve. Okay. But now I think Christmas because his family so far and I don't have anybody left. Um, I, yeah. uh, it's just he and I, you know, it's developed into its own little, let's eat what we want on Christmas, not what we say we you know, not what the world says we should eat yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we do i I'm, I'm assuming does that involve cheeses cheeses um, yeah. more on more so on thanksgiving than it does on christmas i think by christmas we're you know we would have a refrigerator we would send people home with most of our leftovers on thanksgiving oh still a refrigerator full of food i i have a habit of overbuying food. Mm-hmm. My excuse is usually you never know if you know we're going to be hungry, or there's going to be a, we can't get to the supermarket. Now, is that you something that you snowed in? Right. Is that something that you learned growing up? Did you come from a big family? No. No. It was I had two brothers, mother and a father. Mm-hmm. I was younger, and as I grew up, me yeah, and my father pretty much went his own way. Uh, but then it was just me, and my mother, and my two brothers. Hmm. And everybody seemed to have, you know, pissed on and moved on. I don't yeah. know. So, sometimes it feels like mothers feel, you know, when you've got boys in the house that you need to have more food around because no matter what age you are, you're always a growing boy. And that's the mother's answer. <laughs> I mean, my, my mother-in-law, she lives by herself. But to see her kitchen and her fridge, that lady stocks up like she's still got kids at home. Yeah. I just... I never understood that either. I mean, my mother was under five foot. Okay. I'm only about five, five. My brothers were taller than me, but we weren't, we were not big people. Okay. And we should not have been big eaters. So why, you know, like my mother, you know, why she had eight bottles of ketchup at any given time was beyond me. But I find myself as I get older, because it's on sale, you don't know. You don't know if you're going to find it at such a good place now. Growing up, we always had a turkey, and my grandmother always made the pies. My grandmother owed her cooking 
to, I assume it may have been the only job she had, but less importantly, a job she held as a young lady at a diner. Mm-hmm. She, she decided that before she was out on her own, that she had wanted to have experience working. So she went to this diner, it was a family restaurant, and she asked while working there to learn how to cook some of their uh, their dishes. As far as uh, favorite foods during the holidays, grandma's pies were always best. My aunt, who is the youngest child in her family, Aunt Gwen, she, I think she, for years, tried to impress her mother, who was so accomplished at her baking skills that Aunt Gwen would try to bring a pecan pie to Thanksgiving every year. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, some things are more difficult than others, and I've grown to learn that a pecan pie is a a very challenging thing in that that because of the sugar content on it, it could very easily be burnt. It's crows, yeah. So uh, I felt bad for years because Aunt Gwen would try to make a pecan pie to bring to Thanksgiving to impress her mother. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) the pie was always burnt. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> but 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 as much as I loved Aunt Gwen because she was my mother's younger sister and she was a very affectionate lady, mm-hmm. knowing the pie is still knowing the pie was burnt, I would have to ask for a piece of Aunt Gwen's pie. Mm-hmm. And I had to ask in a way that she heard me. So she right. knew that her pie was appreciated, even though it was burned. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually eat the pie? I think so. Um, you know, you could scrape off the, the the burnt part, and usually there's the kind of the the, uh, the gelatinous part of the pecan pie, the sugar. Oh, yes, it's the best part of the pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because as a kid, I remember pecans used to be so expensive, and. Mm-hmm. We never had pecan pie readily available in stores when I was growing up. It used to be a treat. When we would go to visit another aunt of mine that lived in Florida, we would stop at a restaurant along the way, and uh, us kids would be allowed to have a slice of pecan pie. Mm -hmm. So that that was our treat then. So, Sue, uh, what about you? Uh, Did you have a favorite dish that's made during the holidays? Well, I love everything, and I especially love pecan pie. Uh, I also am very fond of Susan Stanberg's recipe for cranberry sauce or cranberry pudding. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what you would call it. She called it Mother Stan, Stanberg's uh, cranberry pudding. Um, and I, I try it. She used to read that on NPR every Thanksgiving and I've made it off and on. And it's it, it has cream and 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 stuff in it. So the cranberries, even though there are whole cranberries in it, they don't seem so tart. Mm-hmm. Mostly, I like cranberry put or cranberry sauce that is the just gelatinous stuff. And I don't I think I don't think making pecan pies was that hard. I've never burnt one of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but. Now, I've done some really odd things. The first time I made Mama Sandberg's cranberry sauce, mm-hmm. mix this in a blender, and it turns all pink, and then you freeze it for a while. I think mostly so it gets solid before you serve it, because I think Susan makes it just before just before the family gets there. But I always follow the instructions, but... I think you could just put it in the refrigerator if you left it there long enough. But the first time I made this, I was pouring stuff into the blender and I started to push it down and I didn't turn the blender off and I broke, chipped a uh, wooden spoon in it and I decided <laughs> not to serve it because I wasn't sure that it would have the wood in it. Oh, it. It's Sue's cranberry surprise. <laughs> That's true. So uh, they didn't get it that year. The Duke does not like it at all. He doesn't like he doesn't he doesn't like a lot of fruit. He he's pretty much a meat and potatoes guy. Mm-hmm. It's different than it uses whole cranberries in it. it, it there are some that are chopped up, but 
there, it also has whole cranberries and pieces of, of orange and stuff in it. But Ooh. it is it's got whipping cream in it. And that just and well, I think there's some extra sugar. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've made the recipe, but it's got other things in it than you usually find in cranberry sauce. Mm-hmm. You know, cranberry sauce has cranberries and maybe oranges and stuff like that. But this is just got it's got whipping cream in it and some sugar. Well, there's sugar in all of it because cranberries are really sour and bitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I really love this because it's just it's just different. Do you have a favorite holiday memory in your childhood or present with a family member who has passed away, perhaps? I remember at Christmas time, my parents, you know, we would go to bed and my parents would probably go up the street, maybe two doors to uh, friends mm-hmm. Christmas Eve. And I remember I just happened to be awake when they were coming home. And I remember hearing them and being, I swore it was Santa Claus and the elves. <laughs> <laughs> that that for some reason I'll always remember. Mm-hmm. I have my mother's Christmas tree, her artificial Christmas tree. Yeah, and she only ever used the top of the tree. It's like two parts, a top and a bottom. Mm-hmm. And in order for the top of the tree to stand in the tree stand, you needed to like wrap the base in a dish towel, you know, jam a wooden spoon in there so it didn't wiggle. Um, <laughs> in the tree. We have a wooden spoon. We have the wooden spoon, one of my mother's wooden spoons, and a dish towel. You know, it's tucked in the base. And it's nothing but a tradition that only Gavin and I know. You know, because my mother loves Gavin to death. Yeah. um, It's funny. A lot of people come in, they go, do you know there's a wooden spoon on your tree? And we're like, yeah, it's my mother's. (laughs) (laughs) And Gavin will say something stupid. Yeah, she's hit the gym with it all the time or something. (laughs) One of my favorite memories was as a child in the f- the first house that was new to me because we we had moved for the first time that I was old enough to remember. Mm-hmm. We had this beautiful clustering of trees on our property, and they were old trees. And the, that's one of my favorite things about living out somewhat rural is that yeah. you could have trees old enough that they would be taller than your house. <laughs> and uh, yeah. one of my favorite memories of the holidays was being in this house where I was old enough to have remembered moving for the first time. Mm-hmm. And there was this great snowstorm and the trees were all heavy with the snow and they were slightly bent over and it looked like they could fall at any moment because they were so thick with the snow. It was so covered with snow outside that when there was a full moon, which there was in this occasion, the snow was just lit up as if it were daylight outdoors. And it was just absolutely gorgeous. And of course, to a child, it was like uh, imagining what it would be like to be at the North Pole and seeing Santa Claus. Right. Um, But a part of that time that was very special to me is a time that others might consider to be somewhat sad. It's the year that I realized there was no such thing as Santa Claus. (laughs) (laughs) Now, to me, it wasn't a tragedy because I had stayed up that night. My eldest sister, Ronnie, had just gone off to college. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I wasn't seeing her regularly as I was used to. Mm -hmm. And I stayed up that night hoping she'd be home because I was told she would be. And I fell asleep in the living room. Mm -hmm. Not only as a child did I fall asleep in the living room, because, of course, as a child, you could disappear almost anywhere. um, Right. But I fell asleep under the coffee table. (laughs) So, 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 of course, anyone coming into the room wouldn't know that there was a child under the coffee table. So yeah. that year, I learned that there isn't a Santa Claus because my sister came home from college and she had placed her wrapped gifts under the tree. And of course, I awoke to the sound of not only my sister coming home from college, 
but also seeing that it wasn't Santa under the tree. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I guess among the favorite memories was my grandparents had retired just before I was born. So they were around all year round mm-hmm. and they, they would be, they became what others called snowbirds. You know, they, they yeah. lived in the South during the winter. So growing up as a small child, I was used to the fact that grandma and grandpa weren't around at Christmas time that they, they went to go spend the winter with my other aunt and uncle that lived in Florida. Mm-hmm. My grandmother grew up on a farm and she learned a lot of the old fashioned and traditional things. Like she learned how to do knitting and crocheting. I was very fortunate because my grandmother spent the time making handmade things for her grandchildren. And (laughs) yes. And it was no secret that grandma and grandpa would send their Christmas gifts to us in advance. And the box often would hide under dad's favorite chair in the living room. Yeah. So, of course, we knew that that was what was in there, but none of us peeked because we didn't want to spoil our Christmas. I I remember uh, several Christmases where I got handmade things from my grandparents. And, of course, I, I don't think that today's generation is such that they would appreciate that. And so what about you, Sue? Do you have a favorite memory of the holidays? Well, when I was a child... We drove from the Denver metro area to the Lincoln metro area, a distance about 500 miles. We stopped in a little town called Stratton, Nebraska, and spent at least part of a night there, maybe uh, 12 hours, you know, from supper to breakfast or something with my mother's sister and her husband and, and family. She had like nine kids and, 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 it was wonderful. There was always a multitude of people there. There were kids that came home with their kids, and there were kids that were still growing up, and there were kids that lived in town and were over, and it was just amazing. And they had this really huge table in the kitchen, mm-hmm. and you'd come down after you'd slept for a few hours because we usually got there late and woke everybody up. and. I don't know, for some reason, my parents were really into that, (laughs) but I I don't think it was deliberate, but it seemed to always happen. And and then you you, we'd sleep, they put us to bed with other children or on the floor or somewhere. And and then we go to sleep and we'd wake up about six o'clock in the morning because it smelled incredible in their house. And then we would go downstairs and my aunt would be cooking. And my aunt and uncle would be cooking breakfast hmm. uh, because it took two of them to feed their family. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, if you were, you may, because they had a big meal every at every meal. And for breakfast, they had eggs and they had bacon and sometimes ham and sometimes sausage, all of that stuff. And that all went on one plate. And the eggs went on a plate, cooked eggs, usually easy over, but sometimes hard. And you didn't ask for anything else. That's what that's what was there. And if you didn't like it, you didn't eat. They had pancakes. They had toast. They had, and frequently they had biscuits. <laughs> and they just, and occasionally they'd have fried potatoes. Not very often, but yeah, occasionally if they if they had an outrageous amount of potatoes that year, they had a big garden out back. But mm-hmm. uh, but there were there were nine kids in the family. Well, 10 because they adopted their oldest grandson, but there there were a huge number of people. And then when the kids got older, I mean, as they aged out and went off to college or went to or got married and moved, a couple of them moved to the East Coast and and some of them moved up north and some of them just further out in the state somewhere. And, and there were kids that lived in town and there were kids that were still living at home and and the kids that were gone usually came back with children. And so the house was always full of people when we were there. It was a holidays that was, and I don't remember them ever having a tree. We never decorated at my house as a kid. I never saw my house with a Christmas tree. Never saw 
stuff decorated on it. We sometimes had Christmas there, not very often. I remember one year we did, and Mom served oyster stew oh. for Christmas Eve, which was delicious. I, I think she made it with canned oysters, but it was wonderful. Uh, I'd never had it before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> But And then she started, because I liked it, I don't think any of the other kids liked it. I think because I liked it, she would make it occasionally uh, around Thanksgiving mm -hmm. because there was somebody else to eat it besides her. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how that works. But we, we decorated our house. We drove from one state to another. It was about 500 miles. Took about 12 hours, and sometimes we'd stop off at my aunt's, and sometimes we'd stop off that she had a couple of kids that lived along the way as well. And depending on how much time Dad thought he had, we would maybe stop at various places along the way. And then we got to, to here, and we'd get to Lincoln, and we would stay with my maternal grandparents. Mm -hmm. My paternal grandparents had moved to the West Coast, and they had passed on before I was born. So, Jim, is there a recipe that you make that you've always made or that you always try and make that's your favorite? No. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, gr growing up Thanksgiving in our, in our house growing up, and we could have as much as 30 people in the house, and my mother would always have two two different types of stuffing. And mm -hmm. one stuffing would be in the bird, would be the turkey cooked stuffing. And the other would be just the regular stuffing with Italian sausage. And since I don't stuff my bird, I just uh, bake this stuffing separately. I like to make it with Italian sausage. And it usually takes about maybe two or three pounds, depending on how yeah, depending how on ever. how much you're going to make. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> sometimes I bake the sausage. Well, I usually do bake the sausage beforehand. I'll take take it out of the skin. Maybe mm -hmm. a little bit. Sometimes I'll fry it to get the fat out. Sometimes I'll bake it. Actually, baking it is, gives it a nice, a little bit more of a nice, hearty boardwalk flavor to oh, it. Oh, okay. You no. Know? Good tip. Yeah, that I like. I, I'm going to have to try Italian sausage gravy or er, stuffing because I've never had it. Yeah. I mean, definitely make sure you take the fat out. Well, yeah. Okay, but other than that, I mean, you you do everything else that you would normally do with the sausage. You don't add any fancy Italian cheese or anything yeah. like that. It's just the regular old basic uh, stuffing with the Italian sausage cooked into it. And it usually, it doesn't give a heavy flavor. You know, like, it, it's not an overwhelming flavor of Italian sausage, but it is yeah. in there. It, it is in there, and it's good. But it would give it some kind of a flavor. I sometimes find stuffing really bland. Right. And I'm not that fond of really overwhelmingly sagey stuffing. Okay. So so it's kind of bland. If you know, it either yeah. tastes like sage or it's kind of bland. So uh, the Italian sausage would definitely improve its flavor. Yeah. I usually I do like to experiment with foods and things. And this year I came. This year I, I was just going through recipes online, and I I did discover. Um, steamed cakes with the in the steamed pudding cans. Uh huh. And I was looking through some old English recipes, and I found one for sugar plum. Oh. oh okay. For sugar plums. For sugar plums. There's different types of sugar plums, and actually, uh, Alton Brown's recipe for sugar plums. I tried it this afternoon. It's out of this world. It really is. Oh, I may have to try that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's expensive because it has a lot of dried fruits, and <laughs> but it's really, it's good. I tend to think that some of the more interesting things that I have come across recently were through meeting Billy and his family. Mm -hmm. And one of those things was a wonderful cranberry relish that his grandmother made. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it had... You know, citrus zest in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up with the cranberry sauce that came in a can. Yeah. <laughs> One and, of my favorites. I, yeah. Or at least the jellied. I don't care for the, for the whole cranberry sauce in a can. Yeah. And, of course, that's kind of like a Coke and Pepsi conversation. You've got one or the other. <laughs> it's true. 
<laughs> the stuffing with oysters that his grandfather made. One of the things that has come to be a favorite of mine is actually something that I make. I found a recipe for this dessert called apple blondies, and it's basically just a a bar cookie that's sort of cake-like, and it has apple slices in it, and of course the usual cinnamon and whatever seasonings yeah. that you put in there. But for the holidays, I adapt the recipe slightly to give it more of a festive flair. So mm-hmm. what I do to make my apple blondies Christmassy, the usual recipe just simply calls for cinnamon and some brown sugar. Well, mm-hmm. I put in a dash of nutmeg, and then I also will add in some of those cranberry raisins that are called craisins. Oh, yeah, those are good. So the combination of the cranberry raisins with the apples and the cinnamon and nutmeg gives it a little bit of a festive flair. So mm-hmm. that's one of my favorite holiday recipes is my my apple blondies gone holidays. And so, Sue, do you have a favorite recipe of the holidays other than the cranberry sauce that you mentioned? I like to look through, I like to read recipe books. I go on the internet and read recipes. I just, I look for stuff. I I can tell by reading recipes, I have done enough cooking. I can tell by reading a recipe whether or not it will work. Because some things, especially stuff that's posted on the internet, are like, no, I don't think that's going to (laughs) work. Now, there are some things that I don't think will work that do work wonderfully. You know, they just, the chemistry is just something I'm not used to. But I, I'm pretty good at just telling that. But I like to try new stuff. I like to go hunting for things. And sometimes I'll look for things that are special to, that somebody has mentioned that they like that I, I try and make. My husband's family, their Thanksgiving dinners, there was a an aunt or an uncle or somebody i don't know exactly who this was that made this thing that call uh, they called whatever her name was her cherry stuff i'll bet you anything she got it out of a woman's magazine in the mid to late 1960s mm-hmm. it's got like a graham cracker crust Ooh. it's got a can of of cherry pie filling mm-hmm. i suppose you can make your own cherry pie filling but most people don't. And it's got a layer of Cool Whip with a little more sugar in it. Uh-huh. And the, everyone in the family loves this. Hmm. <laughs> Her two daughters take turns making this. And I've been, I, I've been looking for a recipe for it. I think I, can, I, I, think I could just do it. Uh-huh. I, you know, I think I could just figure it out. I mean, but that's sort of what I do. I just like to try new stuff. I like to, and I like cooking old time favorites as well. Okay. Describe your first or your favorite holiday season that, that you have been sharing with your spouse. And what are some of the highlights there? As far as the uh, first holiday with, with Gavin, I know I just bought my first house. It was probably our second it was the second uh, Christmas that we were together, but it was the first time in our own home. Uh, we we literally had a picnic table, a television, uh, maybe a lamp, clothes for work, and a pet rabbit. We didn't have anything. So we <laughs> gave each other. We, we had a tradition, Gavin and I, that the 12 days before Christmas, we would give each other something every day, building up to mm-hmm. the climax at Christmas. Aww. The thing was, we needed things like we needed dish towels, curtains, blank. You know, we needed everything. So everything, like for the house or for ourselves, was gift wrapped and given to each other the twelve days leading up to Christmas. <laughs> it's like dish towels. I mean, I don't think we had a pot. I think we were cooking in a can- cooking bread and old juice cans, and you know, like we, yeah. did, you know, like we. We were goofy. We were, we were also a lot younger. Where having those things didn't matter anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like, think, I guess after a couple months together, we realized yes, we do need dish towels. You know, yeah. I can <laughs> stop taking them. I can stop swiping them from my mother. You know, like, maybe it's yeah. got my own. <laughs> <laughs> my first Thanksgiving with Billy's family, I got to meet his grandmother. It was just such an endearing time because, of course, as I mentioned, his grandparents had were retired business persons. You know, his grandmother had been a hostess for many years, 
in her community. And so I go to Billy's mother's place for Thanksgiving, <laughs> and his grandparents are there. And, of course, they're much more formal with their gatherings than my family because they were business people and grocers. But yeah. they're, they had a proper place setting. There was a salad fork, a cocktail <laughs> fork. Oh, God. <laughs> and, you know, the, uh, my, my mother-in-law may have even brought out the cloth napkins. But Ooh. there was a smaller plate, and I think it may have even been chilled. And, of course, I learned the hard way that that plate was your relish plate. That's where your cold mm-hmm. items were supposed to go on. But the, the best part of that Thanksgiving experience was not only meeting Billy's long-lived grandparents, but this sweet older lady who was uh, quite the conversationalist. Yes. She, she took great measures, or at least so it seemed, to remember her grandson's new boyfriend's name. And so oh. <laughs> when they were leaving after the meal, because of course grandfather shouldn't be driving after dark but the the real secret being is grandfather shouldn't have been driving for years now (laughs) (laughs) as they were leaving grandmother very sweetly called out to me by name so that at least to me it seemed that she had learned my name and remembered it Mm -hmm. well i was seated at a different table across the room because there was such a, a large gathering. Yes. And I was told later on that grandmother had whispered to someone at the table what my name was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just thought that was the cutest thing ever. She wanted to impress me by remembering my name, so she asked it at the dinner table. And the other part of the um, favorite holiday memory with Billy was our first Christmas season together. I had, just a few months before, gotten my own apartment. And when I had moved back, I was living with my eldest sister, Ronnie, until I had gotten my first job. Our first Christmas together, we had spent the evening at my sister Ronnie's, and then we had gone to the town where Billy was living at the time, Mm -hmm. And this is out in the country. Well, it also ends up being his ex's apartment. (laughs) It was a little awkward, but of course his ex wasn't there. And it was, you know, it was an understanding because the two had parted company years before. And Billy was living out there as a result of that relationship. His ex had gotten a teaching job out in the country and that had taken them both out there. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he understood that he was only out there because of him. So the the ex had consented to letting us use his place so that we could actually have Christmas together before Billy had to go to work. So Mm -hmm. it was very special because it was our first Christmas together. It was a little strange because we were in his ex's place. We exchanged our gifts. The next day... When I went to go to my car, which I had left at Billy's, somehow or other, I had left the car at Billy's and we had gone to my sister's with his car. Well, I was gifted a new winter jacket and Uh I ended up leaving my car keys in the other jacket because I switched to the new one that I had been given. Right. So after we had had our holiday in Billy's ex's place, I had to phone up my sister for her to meet us because I left my jacket (laughs) with the keys at her place. (laughs) And I had to get home to the city, Mm -hmm. to my apartment, because I had to work on Monday. (laughs) And what about you, Sue? Uh, What was your favorite? um, my first Thanksgiving, of course, we went to the family dinner with mm-hmm. all these people that I still have no idea who most of them are. <laughs> I see them once a year at 
at Thanksgiving. Most of them seem to remember me, but I have no idea. Who they are. So they came to or they came to our reception. We didn't have we we did not invite anyone to our wedding, but we um, but my first Christmas with him well we went to thanksgiving and i had met his family a bunch of family but then at christmas time we went over we had we had just spent this whole week together it was the little before christmas but it was the end of school i was still taking classes at that time and we went over to his mother's because he always helped her put up the christmas tree and even though i had met her previously on uh, Thanksgiving, but there was a whole horde of people there. And so we we were putting up the Christmas tree. And then, of course, we went back over there uh, Christmas Eve. I, she was so sweet. We were, we were sitting in the living room at some point, just not doing anything. And the Duke had picked up my hand and was playing with it. And she came into the room and he sort of discreetly put it down. And she said... <laughs> Go ahead. You can hold her hand. <laughs> I felt like a, you know, a, something a, really like two inches tall. I think I must have blushed. <laughs> I just, I, nobody had ever said anything like that to me. I don't think ever. <laughs> but that was really funny. And, and we did the Christmas Eve thing with those folks. And then we had Christmas over at his house. And it may have been at that point that I moved in with him. I'm not sure, but at some point thereafter, I moved in with him. <laughs> we started by talking off about first, but did did you have a favorite memory for the holidays to, of you two well, together? In the years prior to mine getting involved with the Duke, I had invited like students from the university over international students that didn't have anywhere to go and didn't feel comfortable with their host family or their host family had left town, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. I just, at Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, I would just throw my house open to just pretty much everybody to, we had big dinners and I'd make traditional American food. And, and if we had a lot of international people there, I would talk about, various customs of of Amer- different Americans and how they celebrated those holidays. And we would sometimes try, and then they would reciprocate with how they celebrated similar holidays and what have you. It was kind of, mm-hmm. it was pretty interesting. So do you and your spouse have gift-giving traditions? Gavin and I, when we first got together, for the first couple of years, we were doing 12 12, the 12 days before Christmas, we would give each other a little gift. Then it would be something like dish towels or wooden spoons or things that we needed for the house. Mm-hmm. And now that we're older and we're a little bit more, uh, you know, we have that type of stuff where we'll pick it up during the year rather than wait for Christmas. We still do it. Maybe a couple days before Christmas, we'll give each other something, just something to say thank you or want, you know, you're great yeah. at Christmas. It's usually, you know, Gavin might need a tool or, he, uh, you know, something like that. It's nothing overboard or we yeah. don't as far as the gift giving stuff i mean this is the first year that i'm really going to need socks and underwear they've all been, sh- <laughs> they've all been sh- <laughs> so it's like you know i'll let gavin know or i'll you know the sizes and stuff and i'm sure it'll be like just things that'll you know the day before a couple two days before christmas is like it's 12 days of christmas and <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> down and give each other a little gift before christmas yeah that sounds good that, that, that's fun. I mean, it was it, it it was very handy when we needed things like bowls and mm-hmm. stuff like that. It was a nice way to just. This was before the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. We entertain ourselves that way with things like that. Yeah. The gift giving is always a challenge with us. We do exchange gifts because he works in retail, and so of course he's able to use his discount to his advantage. He's able to shop for me on a different scale than I. So what I've done is rather than set a dollar value, because I would be hard-pressed to reach the level of his discount, (laughs) um, I have set an unspoken limit as far as item number. So I would say, you know, maybe a dozen things, not to 
to to go crazy with gifting. So I I will, regardless of what the items equal up to monetarily, I will just tell myself, okay, I've gotten him a dozen things. That's that's it. I I try to buy in different categories so that. I don't get him all socks or clothes or whatever. I'll try right. to do different varieties of things. One of my favorite things to do is I will buy him a book for Christmas. I try to have it be something unique and special that I know he'll appreciate. So one year I bought him a book about the steampunk culture because yeah. he's done costuming before in the past. And it was something that fascinated him. So that book goes over the history of the H.G. Wells books and the steampunk culture that has more recently arisen through a rediscovery of those those that literature. I think it was just this last year I bought him a book that was about strange and unusual places in our state. So oh, yeah. It was sort of a Ripley's Believe It or Not kind of book. (laughs) Sue, what do you and the Duke do for your gift giving? Well, we don't tend to always give gifts to each other. We were in our late 30s or mid to late 30s when we got married. You know, it was it was like we didn't need we didn't really need wedding gifts because Mm -hmm. we had everything that we needed. Uh, You know, we had when we had moved in together, we had over 3,000 books and there was only like four duplicates. Oh, (laughs) we had sheets and towels for for every size bed you you could possibly have. (laughs) Um, We had. He didn't have very many dishes, nor pots, nor p- and pans. Mm-hmm. I had a hoard of them. I had a complete set, a kitchen, uh, you know, and it's just we had more furniture than we needed, uh, that kind of stuff. It's mm-hmm. just we we had everything that we needed. We didn't need anything. <laughs> and we still have that. We buy each other gifts in a sense. But we buy them throughout the year when we see something we think somebody like, we buy it and bring it home to them. Okay. So it's not, a, we don't need to do formal gift giving. We just say, hey, I think you'd like this. And so I got it for you. Mm-hmm. Now, does that apply to the grandchildren too? or? Well, no, no, nor to our daughter. Now, when at various times, uh, the Duke and I have been not really well off. I've been sick. He's been sick. We, you know, we just, and so I looked around for things that were not terribly expensive and especially for people I didn't know. And for people that I was pretty certain were going to break things and, or throw them away within the week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I started making dough ornaments. Okay. with, With like, uh, bread dough kind of stuff. I don't know exactly how to, it, it didn't have leavening in it, but it's, it, it's like flour and water and salt. Yeah. I think they call it salt dough. Maybe I mean, that could be whatever. I, I don't know, but I would make these and I would roll them out and I took my cookie cutters and I could cut these things out and I decorated them and painted them and, and, and gave them out to people. Mm-hmm. And then my daughter, when she lived in this area, she thought that was pretty cool. And she needed something to give to her nieces and nephews for basically the same reason. They were not probably going to be very appreciative of it. She didn't want to spend a lot of money on something that was going to be thrown out or what have you. And so she started helping me with these. And we made like lots of these for for the kids and the nieces and nephews and, and, and what have you. And then she started branching out with things. What part of the holidays are you looking forward to the most? This time of the year now, where you're building up towards Christmas. Mm-hmm. I think I enjoy preparing for Christmas, you know, getting out there, listening to the mu- you know the Christmas music, walking through the mall, walking mm-hmm. through the city. Just the Christmas music, the Christmas lights, the Christmas decorations, a lot of times the Christmas uh, parties and things like that. I think I enjoy that more than the actual holiday itself. 
does it bother you that they start all that earlier and earlier every year? Not at all. Oh, okay. This year, I'm very... Uh, um, this year, my neighborhood... Today was a very warm day here. I mean, I was in mm-hmm. shorts, shorts and a t-shirt the whole day. <laughs> you know, if I had more... If I could find my other flip-flop, I would have been wearing them. And a lot of people on my block have already decorated because it's warm and i don't yeah. i don't mind it starting early i mean i don't like it before halloween okay but right after halloween people were get, yeah were starting and i liked it because it does you know why not incorporate thanksgiving into the christmas holiday rather than the two of them be separate you know what i mean like i i i, I don't like the idea of a turkey standing next to a santa claus on my <laughs> right. yeah but I don't mind Thanksgiving and Christmas mix. Christmas, the fun of Christmas coming before Thanksgiving. I enjoy it, you know, because the thing, because of the things that I do like about Christmas. I do like looking at people's, like in the city, a lot of people may decorate their windows, or, their, or out here in the country, the people decorate their their whole yards, you know. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I do enjoy that, and sometimes you just can't see it all. I think that. What I'm looking forward to most is having my sisters together, which doesn't happen as often as it used to. Yeah. I, you know, I live a distance from my, the rest of my family. And as often as I try to get to visit, it's not always a time where both of my sisters can be there together. Mm-hmm. My, my other sister, Betty, she works a couple of jobs quite often. Yeah. So I will, you know, I'll go down for Friday night at my sister Ronnie's and Betty can't come because she's got some other sort of commitment. But I think what I'm looking forward to most for the holidays is being able to spend time with both of my sisters, also spending time with my mother-in-law. She's in a very difficult yet interesting position in life because while she's in her 70s and her parents lived into their 90s she and i have that in common that neither of us have our parents anymore Mm -hmm. i'm just very glad that she and i have that kind of relationship where we are friends some of the other parts of the holidays that i'm looking forward to most you know i i like to watch the christmas movies i i have kind of a personal goal maybe of finding a different movie sometimes. Yeah. You know, they're all these standards that everybody watches, Red Rudolph and Frosty, and those are all fine and good, but sometimes you're just not in the mood to see the same movie over for the millionth time. My favorite part of holidays are always the end of the holidays because I put a lot of effort usually into the holidays, and I, I decorate my house because we never did that as a child. You know, I, I, I decorate the tree. I put 10 times more ornaments on my tree than I should have. I, in one of the apartments I lived in when I was at university and I was really broke and I didn't have much. I found that I, I was looking through a magazine I, I, and they were talking about ornaments that they made with a pictures of bells that were, they took three of the, they drew out like three bells and they folded them in half and they glued them together at the at the edges mm-hmm. and then they hung them up and and they you know kind of fluffed out and i'm going well that's kind of cool and they made some other things tree uh, bells and trees and, and and what have you so that year i i had gotten my hands on some colored paper colored typing paper mm-hmm. and i made these and I cut out these these ornaments and I hung them all over my house on the ceiling. <laughs> and I don't know, it didn't take, it seemed like it didn't take very long to hang them up. But when I went to take them down, it seemed like it took forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I find the holidays really exhausting. Mm-hmm. And by the time I get the house decorated and I make the pies and the what have you, because, well, I don't do so much of that anymore because I don't have anyone to feed. But I used to do that. I just, I was so exhausted. I was just, the most important part of the, of the holidays was the end of them.
This show is a proud member of the Pride 48 Podcasting Network. Check out other great podcasts at pride48.com slash shows.